From Cheaters Surveillance Cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. What's going on, babe? Oh my, what is going on? I'm his fiance. What's his fiance? This is just my homegirl. I'm your homegirl now. Office. Somebody needs to get this big mother. Yeah. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Deciding to take the next step, Neva Bennett sees red flags in her fiance's behavior. Concerned about her man's possible deception, Neva comes to the professionals for assistance. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Eric proposed to me. It was so beautiful. It was in front of our family. It was around the Thanksgiving holidays. It was a lovely time. And um, it was cool at first, you know, making preparations for us to spend the rest of our lives together. And then the distance started, you know. The, he stopped wanting to make plans. He stopped wanting to go to appointments. You know, it was getting closer and closer to our time. We're supposed to get married. and. I know something's wrong because I haven't worn my ring in the last couple of weeks and he hasn't even noticed it. Eric Gordon, age 25, a medical supply specialist suspected of stitching another woman into his relationship. After a preliminary briefing, Cheaters deploys intelligence units to the suspect's employment. About lunchtime, Gordon exits the building with his arm wrapped around an unknown woman. The odd couple cross a thoroughfare to share a quick meal at a burger joint. Apparently, things heat up during the meal. The mysterious femme fatale leans over to wipe off the sweaty brow of the suspect before giving Gordon a spicy kiss. Well, he has another job where he works in the office, and he's always saying he has to put in extra time because he wants to make extra money for the wedding. And it's just, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right, because there's been a few times where I've called to the office and he's not even there. And they'll say, well, he hasn't even been in all day. Our sex life was is astronomical. He's a very soft, tender lover. He would kiss me, he would touch me, he would hold me, he would talk to me. Now, he doesn't kiss me at all. It's been two months, if not more, since he's even touched me. And then when he would touch me, he just gets on and does his business. You know, if you're not sleeping with me, who are you sleeping with? I need to know what, what is this, and why aren't you noticing that the woman you love is not carrying around the rock that you got her? You know, these are things I would notice. And he's like, oh, I'm just crazy. It's just my imagination playing games on me. He tries to make me feel like I'm delusional or something, and I know I'm not. After some time, Gordon and his secret siren finished their meals. Arm in arm, they head toward the office. But first, a quick stop by Gordon's vehicle to steal a few more moments of playful hugging and kissing before returning to work. I'm a little older than Eric. You know, so I've told him lots of things I've been through before. And you would, I thought he understood, but it seems like he's sending me through the same thing because it feels the same, that pain, that emptiness. And it's like he doesn't care. He has no consideration for my feelings. Cheaters detectives continue to stake out Gordon's workplace. Once again, the suspect leaves work with his shorty, now identified only as Mashi. The suspect hustles his ulterior woman into his chariot. Tailed by the cheater's team across town, Gordon arrives at an obscure car lot. Mashi and her man examine a low-end vehicle. The companion sits in the car, enjoying the new car smell, as a dealer comes up to talk to the couple. The dealer leads the couple to a hot rod more fitting to Gordon's mistress. Apparently, Mashi loves the deal being worked out as she delivers a hug, enthusiastically kicking up her heels. Upon the deal's conclusion, the suspect takes Mashi back to his place of employment. Gordon then escorts the hottie to a nearby bus stop. Intimately saying goodbye, the suspect leaves her and heads home for the evening to a distraught Nifa. The stakeout of Gordon's workplace continues as Cheater's squad follows their regular routine. As usual, Gordon and his mistress exit the building, leaving in the suspect's car. But this time, Gordon ferries his companion down the street to a hotel. In gentlemanly fashion, the suspect leads his babe into the building for a long lunch and a quickie. 
Sometime later, Gordon and Mashi emerge from the hotel, hugging at the car in post-coital bliss. The suspect bundles the young lady into his car for the ride back to work. The duo act as if nothing has occurred. Cheaters wraps up the case. Coming up, the confrontation. After acquiring all evidence pointing to infidelity, Cheater summons Nifa to a case briefing. Aghast that her relationship crumbles around her, Nifa fearfully views the footage. Nifa, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm okay. I understand that you and Eric have been going through a lot. Yes, we have. Well, as you know, Nifa, we have conducted our investigation. Yes. Our detectives have come out with some very astounding findings. My question for you is, are you prepared to see that? I'm prepared for the truth. Okay. We begin our investigation outside of Eric's workplace. A few moments later, we see Eric emerge with a female next to him. Do you recognize her? I don't know who that little bitch is. So you've never seen her in your life? No, I haven't. Okay. After walking out with this woman, they go over to a fast food establishment and get a meal together. That's when we see our detectives get a shot of them inside the restaurant sharing wow. a meal. He then leans wow. over as she wipes some food off his face. What the and gives Eric a kiss. See, we used to go to lunch together, and all that has came to cease. So he actually used to take you out to yes, that, that same place? Yes, we would for lunch, and... quickies, and all that other good And so he's with this little hooker at. Continuing on, Nifa, on this day of our investigation, we are outside of Eric's workplace. <sighs> a few moments later, he emerges again with that female dressed in the business attire. Wow. He escorts her to his vehicle, opening the door, and they leave together. As our detectives follow them, they arrive at a car dealership. That's when we see Eric and this female walking, looking at the cars. We see him looking at the price. He opens the door for him. He should be a doorman. Yeah, yeah. This is Most unbelievable. Definitely. Listen, they walk over to that white Mustang, and right before they're about to look at it, he gets a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call, Nifa. Tell me if you remember this. So after finishing up that very wow. simple call with you, Nifa, he then proceeds to what? sit in the Mustang, he gives her a hug, and lifts her off her feet. Oh after they leave the car dealership, Nifa, they drive together in mm -hmm. Eric's vehicle, and they return to work. Mm. Before going into work, he takes her to the bus stop. Wow. And then he goes home for the evening. Wow. This Who nappy that? nut bastard. We have an exact location of where they're at. Really? Yes, Detective Gomez is at the auto sales place. My question for you is, Nifa, are you ready to confront Eric? Hell to the yeah. Okay, well, you know what? Let's do this right this way. Yes, let's flick her ass. We're pulling up right now. This is the same car, car dealership. All right, there's Detective Gomez right there. You ready? Yes, I am. All right, let's I'm ready do it. To get this let's get out right now. Is that now. them right there? You're getting in the car right, right now. Let's everybody go. out. Right there. So, what's going on, babe? It's his fiance. It's his fiance. Oh, cheaters? I, I didn't yeah. know he had cheaters. a fiance. Oh, really? Yes. We've been together cheaters? for three years. Yes, mother cheaters. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is so embarrassing. Years. We're engaged to hold be married. Hold up. Why yes. are you cussing at me? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on. No, it ain't wait nothing. What the Whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. oh So, God. snack size cheaters. Barbie? Switch. Oh. Really? Snack size Barbie? Really? Oh, man. Oh, really? You ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to do all that right now. You cheater. Yes, mother Cheaters, mother cheaters. What the is that about? Oh, so I'm cheating on you? Oh my god. Am I cheating on you now? Eric, are you? I didn't hear you. I'm not cheating on you. Shut the up here signing papers to get a car. You're doing what? I didn't say I was your man. You do what you did. I didn't know. I didn't see what you did. We're together now. We've been together. I just said, I'm helping you out to buy you a car. Why are you helping her out to buy her a car? That's your man? Look, look, look. The bus stop was Barbie? Got this bitch all up here at the damn parking lot at the car lot. Coming up, 
the conclusion. I'm about to buy this company, and you doing this now? You buying this company, but you got this bitch up here trying to buy our car. How did you guys meet? I was coming down from the elevator to go to lunch one day, mm -hmm. and he just me. And okay. we've been talking ever since. I mean, we go to lunch together. I mean. And he never mentioned a thing about having a fiance. No, he told me he was single. He's a musician, and he's about to own the office spaces he's in. I, I mean. Okay, well, I hate to tell you this. Those are all lives. Dude, we like this is look. How about we you do this? How about You're not giving me these How about we do this? What you talking about? I really didn't know. I thought that he was a loving guy that was trying to help me, that wanted to be me. I just asked him when we were in there if it was serious. I you know, understand. I completely I understand so. that. So, what's been going on between you and him? Why are you in my face? You because need to be checking you are him with first my of all. Man, I am not with here. your man. Somebody yeah. needs to get this big mother yeah. out of yes, my face. I'm a big mother. Somebody needs to get her out of my face. No way. No way. You won't see him. See what when that bomb um, blows what up in your face. Get Somebody needs to get bus stop. Who gets dropped off at the mother bus stop? Listen, Nifa was a little bit suspicious because she said your intimacy has has not existed in your relationship. I'm freaking working. Get her ass off what of me. What the you gonna do, bitch? Get her off of me. What the you gonna do? Get her off of me. Get her off of me. She's talked very highly of you. Your woman loves you, Eric. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I love her too. Then go tell me that. A simple question. This is so freaking embarrassing. Because I know she's that actually not. She didn't true. wear it for a month and said you didn't even notice. If you notice, it's not even on her finger right now. Look. look what? This is just my homegirl. I'm you your homegirl now. Office, so wait home a minute. Homegirl or hotel girl? Okay. Y'all your homegirl. That was not what you were saying. Right? That was not what you were saying when we were oh, checking there about to sign those papers. Why do I got to do all that? Why are you trying to front on me? Why are you trying to play me? Ain't nobody fronting on me. Don't touch me anymore, Sarah. This is crazy, man. You're you talking about how you love what me? You mean? I mean, yeah. Love? I didn't know. Love? I didn't say all that. We've I didn't say all that. You might have misunderstood. You might have misunderstood. Six months did I misunderstand that? Six months? You might have misunderstood. Months? 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 I did not tell you that I loved you. Six months? Okay? Yes. Yeah, I did not. Months. You were the cool person to hang out with. Hold on. That would explain why you didn't notice your ring. Right. You're too busy. 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 But okay. I never told you that I loved you. You're a lie. Okay. But she was you a lie. You put your up in it, right? Hey, I love you. Okay, I love you. I don't care what anybody else say. You know what? Forget cheaters. Forget Eric. whoever the Eric. he is. Eric. Look, I love Eric. you. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Take me back to my office. Look, this Eric, is what's going to happen. I'm ready to go. You need to tell this little bus stop Barbie to get the Eric, back. Look, he needs to back up. If you, you love me, you I need to love, show me. You love who? Do you hear this? You love who? This, okay, you know what? You love who? You. I need to go back to work. I need to go to work. I need look, to go to work, okay? Let me, let you need to take me back. You need to take me back. Let me fix it. Well, you need to right here. Me, I don't need to step You need to take me. You need to take me back to work. Look. Look, somebody gonna have to get her big ass from out the way so I can go to work. Look. Bitch, you can't move mouths and step the Right, I can't move a big ass mouth. You should have right Sweetie, sweetie. You're right. No, that's your sweetie. mouth. Hey, let's, you guys, let's get some air. Let's move out there so y'all can talk. We're standing in between cars. I don't want anyone to get hurt. Go ahead. Okay. Keep, let's get. Let's talk out here. Give you guys a little bit more room. You guys can hash this out. I'm done. This I want you to take me sweetie. back to the office. I have to look. go back to work. You know what? You two deserve each other. I mean, look at y'all. Go, yeah. go with each other. Big and bigger. Go. Big and bigger. Hey, Ask. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Well, here. 
here. Come talk over here, you guys. So she, I mean, I just want to know. What? Bus stop Barbie? No, no, listen. Bus stop Barbie? Okay, okay. Right. Bus stop well, Barbie. Be honest, right? Yeah, this we'll is just honest. you two. This is just listen. you two. If you guys want air conditioning, I got it in there. You guys want to sit on cool for a second? Fine, It'll go. be quiet. You guys can sit, talk. I just want to go. Take me back to my office. Okay. Take me back to my I'll office. I'll take you back, y'all. Right. Take me back we'll to my take office. Take Nice meeting you. Sorry about this whole situation, but uh, we want to I just want to go. I just want to go. I missed up. I messed up, okay? I love you. I'm calling my boss. I'm not coming. I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back. You don't I'm need to. Home. And what you gonna do with that little bus stop she barbie done. bitch? She done. She back on the bus stop. She done. I'm, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me. I'm sorry. I love you. And I love you too. I love you. Too. Following the confrontation, Nifa must make the most difficult of decisions. At the end of the show, Cheater shows you how Nifa comes to grips with her choice. But first, Cheater sits down with former client Brandy Shaw. Brandy returns to Cheaters to give us an update on how she is faring after the dramatic confrontation. When I finally got to approach them, um, it was it was an adrenaline rush. I mean, it was adrenaline. I started chasing after him, and I just I wanted answers right when I saw him. You know, I, he wasn't giving me any answers. He really wasn't giving Clark any answers. They were both lying. It was it was ridiculous. Really? Do you know that's his girlfriend? What's going on? Hold on. Yeah, we've been talking for a couple of months now. I have proof. Look at all these cameras. I have proof. Come on. No, no, no. I back have up, proof. Back up, back up, back I have up. proof. No, you ain't got yes, no proof. I yes, I do. Yes, I do. You know, he, he doesn't come around. He doesn't call anymore. He, I don't call him. I'm all cried out. I actually feel very good. My son deserves his father, though. So whether it's through the courts or whichever way it has to be, he will pay. He will pay for this because my son deserves somebody. He deserves a father. And I didn't know he had a girlfriend or a child. So that doesn't seem strange to you? That is strange to me. That's why I mean he'll need to talk, but not in front of all these cameras. But at the same time, we I'm just catching up. You know, I'm gonna true, let you know true, that true. eventually. Well, we've been kicking it. I told you I missed my period last month. So you know, I mean, all of this, I mean, you already got a child and you got a girl. So I wait. Mean, so it's well, really everything out in the open now, you know what I'm saying? She, she, you like have a I son said, like I with said, that woman. She, she, don't, she hasn't trusted me in a while. There's no loyalty. There's no trust there. The, the, this relationship is over. You know what I'm saying? It's because we're, you don't communicate with her, Joey. No, no, no. We're gone. We're gone. We're gone. And every tragedy is something beautiful. And to me, this was a tragedy because it was years of, I don't look at it as a waste because I got something beautiful out of it. That's my baby boy. The reason I came to Cheaters was to find the truth, and I did, and it set me free. So that was why, you know, I did what I did, and I, I, feel, I feel great. I feel great, and I thank y'all. Following the confrontation, Nifa Bennett permits the suspect a second chance. Nifa states that until trust has been established, she refuses to wear her engagement ring. As for his part in the affair, Eric Gordon takes full blame. Gordon has broken off all contact with his companion. Mashi refuses to comment to cheaters on her involvement at this time. If you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money. From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. They are at a private karaoke lounge. <laughs> you had no idea? No, I had no idea. I cheated! Yes, yes you did. I ain't cheated on you, bitch! You just... <laughs> Real Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Markel Weber, a personal assistant disturbed by his boyfriend's neglectful ways. Concerned about unanswered questions, 
Arkell makes up his mind to contact cheaters in his hunt for the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. When I first met Elton, you know, he was very nice, he was sweet, he would take me out on dates, or I'd take him out on dates, um, call me all the time, text messages, hey, how you doing, love you, boo, you looking good, send me a picture, I'll respond with one. But now, it's kind of reverting back to my past people to where I feel like I give, 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 and now he doesn't want to hold hands, he doesn't want to call me back, and he doesn't want to see me as often as I want to see him, and it's these same basic excuses that I don't want to hear anymore. Elton Smith, age 25, a code writer accused of introducing malware into his relationship. Briefed with details of the case, a cheater squad stakes out the suspect's residence. After some time, an unknown male arrives and approaches Smith's apartment. Cheater's detectives spot both Smith and his unknown suitor leaving the apartment. Covertly followed by cheaters, the suspect and his mysterious man drive to a neighborhood bar and grill. Nonchalantly, the pair enter the building. However, Smith holds hands with his date, and the two enjoy their meal and each other. After they finish their sumptuous feast, they leave the restaurant sometime later. I think that Elton is keeping a lot of secrets from me mainly because of his phone. You know, his phone is constantly ringing. His text messages are always going off. And it's been times where I've been asleep and I can kind of feel him moving into bed, like the fingers move from texting. I'm like, okay, it's two o'clock in the morning. I, I don't want to sound like a bugaboo or something, but I just feel like something isn't right. The reaction that I get from Elsa when I do question him about his phone is that he says that, you know, it's, it's nothing going on. I have nothing to worry about. Um, it's work related. Um, it's his mom, but I just feel, I feel like, you know, your mom living in a different time zone, so she's asleep. It's, it's three or four o'clock in the morning their time, so there shouldn't be a reason why your mom is texting you, and you shouldn't have to hide that. Smith and his dinner date cruise across town, tailed by the cheater's mobile unit. The couple arrive at the suspect's residence. The suspect escorts his beau to the man's vehicle, whereby the two hug for quite a while. They share a few deep kisses, and then, finally sated, the suspect turns and heads away for the night. So for Elton's birthday, I decided to buy him some Beyonce tickets because we haven't been spending a lot of time together. So I came over to surprise him. I was like, hey, I got these tickets for you. And then he kind of looked at me and shrugged his shoulders like, oh, OK. And that really kind of pissed me off. So at that point, I knew someone was right. So you know, I spent all my time and my money searching for this, and you don't even give a damn. Um, and lately, there, there hasn't been any, any talk about us being together or continue things or trips or, you know, or anything. But at this point, I realize that there is something going on. If I do see him and there is another person and he gives me these whack-ass excuses, you're definitely going to need some type of security because it's going to be on. Keeping the stakeout engaged, cheaters' operators wait until evening when the suspect emerges. Smith hops into his vehicle and drives off. Unaware of the trailing cheater's detective, Smith drives across town and arrives at a restaurant. As soon as the suspect parks, the man from previous surveillance, now identified as Justin Parsons, approaches. Smith greets Parsons with a hug and a kiss. The duo enter the restaurant and head for the patio. After some time, Smith and his fresh boy toy leave. At the vehicle, the suspect and his companion hug goodbye, and as Parson walks away, Smith drives away, returning home for the evening. Upon arrival at the suspect's residence, Cheater's operatives observe Smith emerging from his apartment with Parsons and a tiny dog. The lovers get into Smith's car and drive away. The twosome come to a park. Finding a parking spot, Smith and Parsons get out and proceed to walk the pooch. The suspect and his date spend quite a while hiking the path around the park. After a long jaunt, the men return to their vehicle and drive back to the neighborhood. The suspect makes a pit stop at a nearby movie machine. Smith caresses Parsons' shoulder as they choose a flick to watch. Back at the car, the two share a few kisses and an intimate hug. The suspect motors his charge back to his apartment complex. With the dog in one hand and his lover's hand in the other, Smith escorts Parsons into his residence. When Parsons leaves, cheaters' agents wrap up the case and put a bow on it. 
Coming up, The Confrontation. Gathering all evidence of the suspect's duplicity, Cheaters calls on Markell to review the case facts. Setting aside all apprehension, Markell agrees to meet in order to view the truth. Markell, first thing I want to say is thank you for coming out today. I understand you've been going through a lot. Well, as you know, Markell, we have conducted our investigation and we have come up with some findings. That's why you're here. Okay. My question for you is, are you prepared to see them? I'm ready. All right. We begin our investigation as our detectives follow Elton's car, we see him arrive at a restaurant. That's when this unknown male approaches his vehicle. Do you recognize that guy that he's with? No. You've never seen him in your life? Never. Never. Continuing on, Elton gets out and they embrace with a hug. That's when the two of them walk together into the restaurant, they sit outside on the patio, and begin to share some drinks. I'm just taking it to my favorite spot. Well, in the middle of their drinking, Elton receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this. Hello? Hey, what's up? Yeah, uh, um, I mean, I'm still chilling with my homeboys right now. What's up? Well, I'm just trying to figure out if you want to spend some time tonight, because you, you was kind of rushing out the phone with her. I just want to make sure that you... I told you already. I was chilling with my homeboys. Now, you've been doing this. So, I mean, I just, we just have to, you know, see each other a little bit later on tonight, or I'll just we can get together sometime tomorrow. You told me earlier that we were going to hang out, so I kind of cooked and everything. Babe, I, well, continuing on, Markel, after finishing up the phone call, a while later, they exchange a few words. Elton looks a little upset. They go out to the parking lot and proceed to get into different vehicles, and he returns home for the evening. Oh my God. Continuing on with our investigation, Markel, on this day, we are outside of Elton's apartment. Strangely enough, as our detective waits, the two of them emerge and that unknown male has a dog in his hand. After they leave the residence, our detectives follow them as they pull into the parking lot and arrive at a red box machine. They pick out a movie, the two of them go over to Elton's vehicle, and they embrace like they've known each other for a very long time. They seem very comfortable, playful, laughing. I could see that gentleman smiling. But they're too comfortable. After finishing up, they walk inside with the movie in hand and the dog in the other. At this point in time, Markel, we have an exact location on the both of them, they are at Narazzo. It's a private karaoke lounge. Mm -hmm. So if we get on the road right now, we have a great chance of intercepting them and confronting them. Are you ready to do this? I'm ready, let's right, go. Right, right this way, sir. Right this way. Cheaters. Is this Gable with cheaters. I've been following you because your boyfriend, Markel. Boyfriend. Yeah, boyfriend. He's been together for a year. He didn't tell you that? No, he didn't say. All he said was that they wasn't even talking anymore. Coming up next, the conclusion. Both of them, they are at Narazzo. It's a private karaoke lounge. Stupid bitch. I've been following you because your boyfriend. Boyfriend. This bitch know what he is. He didn't tell you that? No. So you're not talking to that bitch. Hey. Hey, bitch, you need to get off me. 
So you had no idea. What was your name again, sir? I'm Justin. Justin, so what exactly happened? And Elton, what happened, man? What you mean, what happened? What the? With you, with, with you and this gentleman, what happened with you and your boyfriend? You guys have been together for a year. What happened, man? I mean, you got a couple Say friends nothing. here. How you guys doing? Hey. <laughs> These people are my face. I'll get them out of your face. Will you talk to me for just for one minute, man? What happened, exactly? What, what happened, man? For real, Marquel? Come on. Relax, relax, relax. All right, listen, I got him out of the room. Talk to me for one second. I'm just asking you questions, man. I'm not here to make you upset. I'm just working because your boyfriend was worried. He had some instincts and he called us. That's why I'm here. This isn't about pissing you off. We, we, we no disrespect. We ain't been together for like months. So what happened? I thought y'all were broken up a long time ago. We've been broke up. I don't know what this really? is. But we're no, we're together. Up in here, Bitch, you crazy. Why the Bitch, you crazy. Really? Stop. Really? Stop. Really? Stop. Stop. Instead of you two's fighting like this, hey, let's just for a second exchange words, exchange words, not punches, it's not worth it. You guys have I'm not with him. All right, hey, let's go outside. Let's go outside so we can talk. Come on, you guys. Let's go. So, Justin, you had no idea? No, I had no idea. What if you walked in here and he was doing the same thing? You know you'd be upset. I'm not with him. Don't okay. talk to him. Just why? That's your problem right there. You ain't gonna talk to him. we broke up. You know that. We didn't break up. You know we ain't been together. We ain't been together for months. What the f you think this is? Bitch, I've been calling you. Cause your ass crazy, I don't want you. We still been I together. Found you talking about? I found somebody new. I found somebody else. Also, his name is Justin? You okay with this too? You know, I didn't even know about this. He Come told on. me y'all broke Come up on. months ago. Come on, we don't, don't need touch me. Come on, we don't need to don't don't touch me. No, I said don't touch me. What? I will get y'all you up. I swear. All he's asking for is a simple answer, man, is why. I gave y'all an answer what the f y'all want to know. Get the f out of my face. Hey, man, the camera, dude. Look, look. You the camera no more. Look. You better look. get your little friend over there, shut the f up. That ain't my friend, I don't, don't even know them. Don't hit me. Markel, we ain't been together. Just talk like, hey, like two gentlemen. We ain't been talk together. it out. What why the f you got these cameras out here? I still got my stuff at your house. Do you think? So you just, you just why? Not say nothing to me. About you need to move, this ain't about you. It is about me, because apparently he didn't tell none of us that was going on. Yeah, let that break. Justin, let's go. I'm not going with you. I'm telling you. You didn't tell me that. Me and you've been together for like three months already. Exactly. You've been together for like three months. We've 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 been together for like three months. Come on, get out the car. All right, man. Well, I'm just letting you know, dude. I'm not here to piss you off or anything. I'm just trying to it's get you. Done, I'm it's, just it's, trying to get you your answers because you're being played by somebody who is with someone else. And it's one thing to do that if you tell them that you're broken up, but you know what? He didn't do that. I see. That's why I said this is this is this is this is kind of what I'm talking about. So how many other people have have there been? How many have there been? On Business. Call their ass up. Put them on shows, whatever show this is. This is cheaters. That's the only reason why we're cheated. here is because he hired us to find you. Yes, I you cheated. did. Yes, you did. I ain't cheating on you, bitch. You just spit. I'm Be out. mad. I'm out. I'm not mad at all. Be mad. Look at you, though. Look at Be you. mad. You don't want to up now, so what? Turn them feelings off. Feelings already off. He Turn them feelings off, bitch. Don't worry about it. You can have that. You all right? Post-confrontation, Markel realizes his need for some alone time. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals how Markel copes with his decision. But now, Cheaters revisits Mindy Madden, who caught her husband splashing around with another woman. Mindy discloses all that has happened since that chaotic confrontation. When I walked in, 
or around the pool area to where they were at, at the hot tub. I saw her, I recognized her as one of his new Facebook friends, and I was furious. It just continued to grow. I felt like this monster just came out of me. What the bloody hell are you doing? Ass, I can't hear you. Get in here, right now. What the, what the hell are you doing? Oh, get, get out of my face. Right now. What are you talking What are you doing? What are you doing? Who is she? What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know I've seen the videos. I contacted a lawyer the day after the bust and started the process for the divorce paperwork. And as soon as Blaze was served his paperwork, he became his old self again. You know, oh, babe, we can't, we can't get divorced. We've been together 22 years. And I thought, are you kidding me right now? No, I'm done. That was it. And I have not allowed him to pursue me at all. You know what? Take her home. Because this I ain't your home. Sorry. You keep him, baby. I don't want He's him. He's yours. I don't want him either. I don't blame you. If you pay attention. I don't blame you one iota. If you pay attention. Just... Thank God. Wow. Open eyes. Get him out. Peace. Back. Watch your backs. Peace. Peace to this. Two of them. Mm. It took me about three or four months to get back to a peaceful mindset. I remember when I first came here, I talked about struggling with that work-life balance. And I'm finding that in my life today. I, I'm not so workaholic mode. You know, I'm able to spend some time by myself and with my friends and do some things outside of work and enjoy my life. And I'm feeling really good about that. So I can see good things on the horizon for me. Following the chaos of the confrontation, Markel Weber makes the decision to break things off with a suspect. Markel speaks to cheaters. He said, it hurt at the time, but it wasn't all bad. After all, I did get to meet Justin, and we've been hanging out quite a bit. Markel insists that he's only become friends with the suspect's companion. If it becomes something more, he says, he'll accept it. But for now, Markel plans on taking things slow. Conscious of his betrayal, the suspect, Elton Smith, admits to Cheater's producers that he wants more than what Markell could offer. Smith states the next time he runs into a similar situation, he'll be more open and forthcoming about his status. The companion, Justin Parsons, declines to comment further on the case to Cheaters. If you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money. From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheater's. What the f*** is this dude? What the hell? What are you doing in my house? You're not worth it. You're not worth my time. Do you not have any remorse at all, Liz? Hey, 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 she's got Real a weapon. Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Tobin Burke's previously failed marriage has made him a bit shy concerning his current relationship. Red flags reminiscent of his previous union have begun popping up lately. This forces Tobin to come to the professionals at Cheaters for assistance in gleaning the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Oh no, I mean, I was married. Um, and um, she, we had, we partied a lot, um, and that didn't work out. <laughs> it ended very badly. Um, and, you know, after that, I, you know, was hesitant to get into anything else serious for a long time because, um, but, you know, Liz came along um, and really kind of changed that for me. I mean, like, it was unexpected. I wasn't looking for anything or what she, we thought it was gonna be a fling. Um, and recently, it's just been kind of distant. Like, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just different. I don't, I see a change in the way that she looks at me. Liz Winters, age 24, a retail manager suspected of selling her boyfriend down the road. 
Cheaters investigators assemble outside the home the suspect shares with Tobin. After some time, a mysterious vehicle pulls up. The driver, an unknown male, gets out and saunters to the front door. The suspect greets the man at the door. Cheaters detectives watch Winters leave the house with her mystery mate. The suspect gets into the man's car as he holds the door open. A short pursuit by the cheaters team ends up at a gun store. Winters and her partner enter the establishment. We don't really have those couple conversations. Like, you know, it's just like kind of small talk and like, oh, hey, you know, and like, and, it's, and the, the fact that she's just doesn't seem interested anymore. And, you know, that, that's not, I'm, a, I'm not a focus of hers like every day, like, you know, it was. I saw that she was tagged um, on a social media site and it was, um, I was able to save them because I didn't, like, she was tagged, she was when she was down with her family in San Antonio. Um, and there was pictures of her with her family and there's pictures of her with this guy that I don't, I don't recognize. I mean, and they're immediately taken down, um, almost immediately. I was able to save them to my phone real quick. Just, you know, the only reason I did that is because I've been suspicious lately. I mean, it's, I've tried to com confront her without confronting her, I guess. I, I bring things up and I talk to her, but I haven't really thrown anything in her face. Um, I haven't showed her the pictures yet. I, you know, I, I because I'm not sure. I don't want to be that jealous boyfriend where it's like acting all crazy, you know? Um, I've had relationships like that where my ex was, she was psycho about jealousy and like, I don't want to be that dude. The two meander slowly through the gun store. The Bonnie and Clyde wannabes check out a few firearms. Sometime later, the cheaters team spot the pair exiting the shop. Once again, the man holds the car door for his date. A short jaunt later sees the two back at the suspect's abode. Winters gets out, then leans back into the car to give the man a quick kiss goodbye. The suspect enters the home she shares with Tobin. The man backs out and drives away. You know, when you're in that relationship and you see that person and they look at you and you can see the love in their eyes and like the fact that, you know, they're there for you. You know, they are, they're there with you, you know, and it was just gone. like blowing a candle out, like, it was just like a change. She has to be honest with me. I mean, I've been completely honest with her about everything, everything. Like all this craziness in my past that I'm trying to forget, you know, I've been honest with her. And I would expect that she would respect me enough to tell me she's not into me anymore. Cheaters' PIs keep watch over Tobin in the suspect's house. Sometime in the afternoon, the man from previous surveillance arrives and goes to the door. The suspect greets the male, now identified as Travis Edwards, with a kiss and a hug before allowing him to enter. A short time later, Winters and Edwards leave the house with a small dog. Pursued by a cheater's mobile unit, Edwards drives to a nearby park. Holding hands, Winters and Edwards walk the dog through the park. The fraudulent couple find a quiet picnic table at which to sit. After some time, Winters and Edwards leave the table holding hands. The suspect and her man wrap their arms around each other as they walk back toward the vehicle. Winters and Edwards return to the house the suspect shares with Tobin. Winters kisses Edwards goodbye. Edwards walks the suspect to her front door. As the suspect's cohort leaves, Cheater's agents wrap up the day of surveillance. Cheater's private eyes continue the stakeout of Tobin and Winters' home. Edwards, showing no fear of being caught, parks directly in the driveway. The suspect greets her new man at the door. The pair hop into Edwards' car. Cheater's intel units follow the car across town to a shopping center. With their arms wrapped comfortably around each other, Winters and Edwards walk toward the ice cream shop. A few minutes later, the suspect and her beau come out with sundaes in hand. The duo find an empty park bench and proceed to enjoy their icy snacks. The romantic couple then enter a cinema. A couple of hours later, they emerge from the theater and walk back to their vehicle. Winters and Edwards drive back to Tobin and the suspect's house. The pair again hold hands and converse while standing by the front door. Winters kisses her long-haired lover. Finally, the suspect opens her door, kisses Edwards one last time, and disappears into the house. As Edwards turns to leave, Cheater's operatives also leave in order to prep their case file for an uninformed Tobin. Coming up, the confrontation.
Now that all evidence of the suspect's secret liaisons have been confirmed, Cheater summons Tobin to a briefing. Enraged at the prospect of another failed relationship, Tobin nevertheless steps up to view the truth. As you know, we have conducted our investigation, Tobin, and before I show you this, I just want to forewarn you, you know, some people find this stuff, you know, disturbing to watch, it'll upset you, it may do a bunch of different things, but what you got to realize is I'm just trying to get you the truth. And that's what I, I mean, is I have to have it, you know, I can't move forward in, like, a serious relationship without being able to trust her. Absolutely. Tobin, on this day of our investigation, we're outside of your residence. Yeah, you see this red vehicle pull up, this gentleman steps out in a hat. Pause that, pause that, yeah. That is, that's that dude, that, that's the photo. From? From, this is what was on social media, I was like, this is the photo I was talking about, the guy that, I mean, I kind of recognize, but I don't recognize as a member of her family. This is that guy. Yeah, that's him. Continuing on, he walks up to the front door and is greeted by Liz. That's when we see the two of them walk out, she locks the door. As our detectives follow the two of them, they arrive at a gun store. The two of them walk into the gun store and begin to look at a few weapons. That's crazy. She, uh, I mean, I tried to get a pistol when we moved in this house because, you know, just for protection, and she was not going to have it. So she doesn't like guns? No, not at all. So this is completely not like Liz? <laughs> no, not at all. After finishing up the gun store, they walk across the parking lot. He once again chivalrously opens he the door for nice her too. and gets in the vehicle. They leave the parking lot and he drops her off at home. Continuing on with our investigation, Tobin, on this day, we're outside of your residence. Yeah. A few moments later, that red vehicle arrives. That's when we see him. The guy again. Get out, walks up to the front door. Liz Those. appears. Mm -hmm. And they exchange what? a kiss on the cheek and a hug. What was, okay. And that... he goes inside of your house. A few <coughs> minutes later, he emerges holding Liz's dog. Yeah, our dog. He escorts her in the vehicle with the dog and they arrive at a park. Okay. They walk the dog together holding hands. Dude, that's, that's messed up. Like. We see them sit on a picnic bench together and with the dog. this is just recently. This is recently. And during this time, Liz receives a phone call. Tobin, what you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you can remember this day. Huh? Hey, babe. How you doing? I'm good, baby. How are you? I'm good. Um, I'm just getting off work a little bit early. Um, heading home. What's you up to? I was just decided to take Bella on a walk at the park by the house. After she just hung up, she said, I love you, and that guy was right next to her. Well, yeah, he's, he's got to know, like, I mean, that's just, that just make, it makes it open season. After finishing up at the park, they put the dog back in the vehicle, they leave together, and they return to your residence. That's when we see him open up the car door for her. She's holding the dog, and they embrace her with another kiss. He then walks her to the door, comes back outside, gets into his vehicle, I can't and he this. leaves the house. So, but where would Liz think you are right now? Well, she thinks I'm at work. I mean, I was working late, because, well, I mean, I do, it happens a lot. You know, I just have to stay and take calls, these guys, but, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, she thinks I'm at work. We have recently received some intel that the two of them are actually at your residence. As soon as we get to the location, we're gonna be led to the front door. At that point in time, we'll make entry and confront the two of them. I um, can't wait. <laughs> understandable, can't wait understandable. To see look on our face. What the f is. What are you doing in my house, dude? Like, seriously. Liz, can I talk to you for a minute? What the hell is going on? Oh, I, but, I will tear. I apologize. What are you for, doing in my house? Oh, I'm in your house because your boyfriend no, wait, wait, found out that you were cheating on him. So, what exactly is going on here? You have him in the house that you share with your boyfriend. I'm going to destroy you. Stop. What are you even doing here? Because I live here, dude. I don't even want you here. And I have you guys going to the movies together. Doing you guys were a lot watching of different me? things. He hired us to because you couldn't give him any answers. Coming up, the conclusion. What the f is this, dude? What the f What the hell? And I have you guys going to the movies together. You guys were watching me? Things. I've been here in the 
this house for two months and he's barely been home. I've met somebody else at a bar and he had no idea. We'll be serious, Don. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I will find you. I'm right here, I'll be right here in your house. Did you go? Do you like seeing us? No. What are you doing so, in my house? My house. I live here too. Yeah, but it's my house. Yeah, and you got this piece of crap here snuggled up on our couch. Oh, what the hell? Piece of crap. Look yeah, who's talking. Crap. Look who's so talking. Look who's cheating. You are the cheating liar. How did all this happen, by the way? Who who aggressed who? How did you meet this gentleman? Well, whenever we moved into the house, we needed roommates, and he applied. That, you're that douchebag that can't afford the apartment. Do you remember these days? Yeah, I do. I mean, do you remember, do you remember wonderful going, days. Do you remember wonderful days? Going to the park, having him pick you up with your dog? Yeah, at least he pays attention to the dog, too. What's, what's this gentleman's name over here? Travis. Travis, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure. All right. Who are you? I'm Clark with the show Cheaters, man. I apologize for, you know, first in here, but can you tell me? He hired us to follow his girlfriend. And what, what about what San Antonio? I mean, oh, you went down there, stayed in a different hotel room with your family. You didn't come with me? You could have come. I was you could have stayed with me. I asked to get off. He said, no, it's cool. You know, it's going to be a I told you two months before I had to go that I was going to go to San Antonio. I know. You didn't ask right then, or else he obviously would have given you that time off. And how long, Travis, has this been going on for? A couple months, at least. And what are your intentions with Liz? Well, actually, I love her. So glad. You know, I want her to be with me. I'll just get my stuff, and you can have your little like, thing. Oh, you can come I'll, back later I'll, to get your stuff. You're I'll not getting your stuff it. with all these people in my house. You're not going to tell me to leave. Yeah, I can tell you to leave whenever the fuck I want. It's my tell house. Tell me, what are you going to do? That dude ain't going to make me. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, get all security with me. Well, come, come here, come on. I, I, I feel come like here. I got wall people, but yeah, come on. Hey, hey. Oh. Oh. You feel like you've gotten everything that you wanted? No, I want my stuff. I mean, I want to come back here. Stuff? Not while everyone's here. I won't. No. He's so upset right now. Like, do you not have any remorse at all, Liz? I do, but not for how he treated me. What did I do to you? What? Did I... It's what? like what? talking to a brick wall. At what point in time did this mistake happen? I went out to one of my bars because I wanted to get away. I couldn't stand alone in the house, like always. <laughs> Let's go, let's go outside. It's so big. Let's go. You gotta give me more. What are you gonna do? Wait, no. Let's go. All you do is sell me. All you do is mess around. Come on. Get on the ground. Oh. Hey, 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 she's got a weapon. Go, 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 go,
We even wind up eating. I've never ate pizza at a funeral in my life at a funeral home. I thought that was kind of uh, romantical crazy. But uh, she was a nice little jump off piece, man. Wasn't nothing serious. Did he lock it? It's, lo it's locked? Is it locked? Yeah. He it's locked, locked it. It's with Wussy ass. Do you got a lot of people out here looking at you with this locked door? Are you just sitting right there? You are just sitting right there, here. aren't you? Get a shot of that. Is he sitting Open right the there? door. We got pepper spray and tear hey, gas. It's your choice. Don't put our hands on me. Come on, come on. We got to finish our lunch. She won't put her hands on you. Come on, we got to finish I got security out here, I promise. I ain't gonna touch you. We'll step away from the door. Back away from the door. Back away from the door. Let him talk. Let him talk. Come on in. Now. All right, let's speak like rational adults. Can we do that? You guys have been together for four and a half years. Did you just make a calculated mistake? Because I, this is a very forgiving person. I don't understand what happened. It was just Everyone makes mistakes. It's okay. I think I believe in very next relationship. You know what I'm saying? If I if I can't really be faithful, per se, I think I just be by myself. That way I can just kind of do what I want to do, do my own thing, and don't nobody else have anything else to say. As, you know, to be truthful with the matter. You know, that way I can do my own thing, ain't nobody tripping. Everybody know what's going on, and you can't, and I won't get caught on cheaters. Dismayed at losing his girlfriend, Tobin Burke agrees that perhaps his previous reluctance to a relationship was the best plan after all. Tobin admits he can't stop thinking about his former girlfriend. However, he also states that going back to her cannot be an option. Offended by the consequences of the confrontation, the suspect, Liz Winters, spits anger at Cheater's producers, exclaiming, I can't believe you guys would violate my privacy like that. You can't just waltz into my home with all those cameras. Who the hell do you think you are? He couldn't come to me and ask if I was unhappy. No, he had to go behind my back and bring Cheaters into our life. The suspect's companion would only admit that he still sees the suspect. If you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money. From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheater's. Yeah, I got to go. Real reality television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Byron Halpern decides to come to Cheaters. Distraught over his girlfriend's recent change in personality, Byron seeks answers from the professionals at Cheaters. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, you know, we were in high school. We were high school sweethearts. You know, I thought she was the world. You know, I would basically give her anything she could possibly want if I could get it. But for like the past six months, for some reason, I just had suspicion. Ladacia Robertson, age 20, an unemployed woman accused of using her feminine wiles to get her buzz on. Briefed on the facts of the case, Cheaters dispatches a unit to the residence the suspect shares with her parents. The suspect, Ladacia Robertson, leaves home texting on her phone. After a few minutes, an unknown vehicle pulls up in front of the house. The suspect gets in and the car drives away. Followed by the Cheaters team, the pair stop at a nearby grocery store. A few minutes later, the suspect and her mystery man emerge from the store. The pair hop into the car and drive away. She's always claiming she's busy for some reason, when she doesn't have a job. And it's hilarious because she's always saying it's with her family. But the funny thing is, when I call her family, when she's supposed to be with that family member, her mom, her aunt, or what have you, I'll call just to, you know, touch base with her, make sure everything all right. Can't get in contact with her. So I get worried, I'll call. Hey, have you talked to Lelisha? Oh, no, I haven't talked to her. What do you mean you haven't talked to her? She said she was with you. Oh, well, she ain't been with me all day. And I'm like, man, where's she been at? When I finally get in contact with her, she was like, well, I was at my partner's house. I had to help him install this computer. You don't even have a job. Did he pay you? 
nah, he didn't pay me. All right, whatever. Then she comes home with a big, you know, bag of smoke. And I be wondering, like, how you get that? Oh, he did. He gave me this for installing a computer. Nah, you ain't get that from installing no damn computer. Hell no. Nah. Because they, if they install a computer for that, I, where can I install some computer? The vehicle arrives at an empty parking lot. Within minutes, Robertson engages her consort on her knees. After some time, the suspect stands up and hugs her companion. The pair get into the car for a short jaunt back to the Robertson residence. The suspect kisses her secret lover. When the two finally separate, the unknown male leaves and Robertson walks inside. I really want to build something with her. I want to build a family with her. You know, have a big house, three car garage, have some little ones running around. But for some reason, we're not seeing eye to eye right now, and I'm thinking something going on. I can't really put my finger on it. Like, I just know it's somebody else. Like, I just got a feeling. She don't act the same towards me no more. She, the same feelings that we used to have, she doesn't have them. Like, if I tell her I love her, yeah, all right, I'll yeah, back at you. Like, when did that start happening? Like, that, that just makes me feel like there's somebody else. Like, I'm not the only one in the picture anymore. Cheater's detectives continue to stake out Robertson's home. After a while, Ladesha emerges to meet with the driver of the white sedan. Robertson and her illicit lover drive to a nearby museum. Now, the odd thing that Cheater's investigators note seems to be that the museum is closed. The empty parking lot serves a far different purpose, however, mainly as a play area for the suspect and the driver, now identified as Damien Franklin. After the conclusion of her lusty activities, Robertson pulls up her shorts and gets into the passenger seat of the vehicle. Franklin returns Robertson to her residence, where the suspect passionately hugs and kisses her beau. The two then part ways. Franklin leaves as the suspect enters her home. The stakeout of Robertson's family home continues with round-the-clock surveillance by Cheater's operatives. Once again, Franklin picks up Robertson. The pair, followed by a tailing Cheaters mobile team, arrive at a taco stand in the area. Robertson and Franklin stand at the window ordering their food. Franklin sits on the hood of his car as they both eat. Afterward, the forbidden couple leave. Franklin follows his motif and drives to an obscure, empty parking lot. Franklin passionately hugs the suspect. Then the fun becomes vulgar as the pair continue to have intercourse on the hood of the car. Sometime later, Franklin lifts the suspect off the hood. Robertson then gets into the vehicle alongside Franklin. The suspect and her companion drive back to Robertson's residence. As the partying pair end their day, Cheater's operatives begin theirs, collating all the case facts for a bereft Byron. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's indiscretions fully exposed, Cheater summons Byron for a case briefing. Despite his insecurities and deciding that knowing is better than not, Byron prepares to face the truth. First thing I'd like to say, Byron, is uh, thank you for coming out today. I understand that you and your significant other have been going through some hard times. Yeah, I have a few suspicions. With that being said, Byron, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. Before I show you what we've come up with, I want to warn you that some people may find this disturbing. It may upset you, but it's just to show you, you know, the truth and what's going on. All right. All righty. We begin our investigation outside of her family residence. You recognize that house? Yes, I do. That's what mom says. All right, she leaves her mom's house. We see Ladesha walk outside. This white vehicle pulls up, and she gets into the passenger side, and her detectives follow. That's when the two arrive at a store. I'll stop it right there. Do you recognize that gentleman? Yeah, that's one of my partners. That's one of your partners? Yeah, that's one of like, my friends. Really, who is that? Friend. This big Damon. So his name's Damien? Yeah, Damien. So you know him? Yeah, I know him real good. Short time later, after going into the store, the two of them emerge, they get into Damien's vehicle, and they leave. As our detectives follow the two of them, they arrive at this parking lot. That's when we see Damien get out, and I don't know if she drops something, but I see her head moving in a certain manner that... Oh, the, nah, she, is she on her knees, man? Yeah, you could... I could tell right to How do you feel about seeing this? Man, 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 bitch. That's probably my partner. 
Then he, they hug him right there. They're hugging and kissing. They embrace after she's on her knees for some time. They get back into the vehicle and they leave the parking lot together. They return to her mother's house. That's when we see them get out of the vehicle. Damien hugs this woman. But so this is what she's doing all day while she's supposedly ripping and running from her mom. Yeah, she's been lying to you, as you can see. Continuing on with our investigation, Byron, on this day, we are outside of Ladacia's family residence. A few months later, we see her walk out, Damien already waiting. She gets in the passenger side of the vehicle, and they drive off. As our detectives follow them, they arrive at a taco stand. They get out, walk up to the window, and order some food together. During this meal, Ladacia receives a phone call, Byron, and I want you to tell me if you remember this. Love you too. Was she up here eating tacos with this? Hugging him too, as she was on the phone. After finishing up the phone call and some tacos at the taco stand, they leave, they arrive at another empty parking lot, and that's when we see her sitting on the hood of the vehicle, big Damien embrace her with a hug. And that's when things get a little bit more serious. That's when you're, we see the two of them. In the empty parking lot though. You're in an empty parking lot engaging in... But you couldn't go out with me, but you want to be in an empty parking lot. Yes, engaging in sexual intercourse on the hood of his vehicle. I told her how I've been done in the past, told her I've been cheated on, and then she turned around and did the same damn thing. Well, after finishing up on the vehicle, they leave that parking lot, and he returns her to her family residence. That's when we see him hug her, slap her on the behind right before she walks inside. Damien leaves. Byron, you know what you've seen. You obviously know what's going on. So listen, they're together at a park right now. If we get in the vans, get on the road, we can go confront them. Are you ready? Yeah, I can go, I'm ready. All right, let's go, right this way. Go around by that trash can, that green trash can. Go around right there, right there, man. What's going on? What's, what's, what's probably my whole ass? Ladesha, can I talk to you? Why's your top off, Ladesha? Hey. You probably be my partner, whole ass. What the f you mad for, bro? What the f you mean, why I'm mad for? Oh, where's you mad at? You whole ass. What you mad at me for? You mad at me? Nah, you. Coming up next, the conclusion. They're together at a park right now. Ladesha, can I talk to you? Why's your top off, Ladesha? You probably be my partner, ho ass. So you just jump on us like that? Man, you, what the f you got going on? What you got going on? You supposed to be at your mama's house. You out here in the park. Like y'all having a picnic. This is your friend, correct? Yeah. My name's Clark. I'm with the show Cheaters. I apologize for running up on you like that, but you've been spending some time with this with, with this girl, Ladesha, from what I understand, yeah? Yeah. What exactly happened? How did you guys how did you guys start really doing all that? One well, night nice. we were just chilling. Got drunk and then it happened from there. It happened from there? Yeah. Why Big Damon? Why nobody else? Because you're boring. I'm boring. Yeah. Why you couldn't just come out and tell? Didn't you know want to. So you just decided to come out here in an empty parking lot and all that shit. For your friend's request, Byron, we've been following you guys for a couple days. Do you recall? Any of these days, taking her to the air museum, you guys engaged in sexual intercourse on the hood of your vehicle. You saw we a pot in the whole way. Oh, yeah. Bro, come on. Ladacia, is this what you wanted? Oh, yeah. This is not what I wanted. Well, this is all your fault. No, it's not my fault. So whose oh, fault is I'm going to see you all way. <laughs> you supposed to be my partner. Talking about you, my friend, you out here with my girl? I ain't tripping, bro. You ain't tripping, about I'm tripping no whole ass. It's a female, bro. What you mad about? I've been with that for three years, bro. What you mad for? 
It was boring. He wasn't interested no more. So, so instead of cheating on him, why wouldn't you just tell him that in the first place so he wouldn't get to this point? I don't know. He was always at work and stuff. What if you just walked up on him doing this to you? How would you feel? No feelings. No questions. No feelings? No questions? No. Nope. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but all right. What about you, Damien? You guys have been friends for almost your whole life. And I understand a drunk mistake between the two of you, but why not? Why not tell? Why not tell your man? You could have just told him. Well, you I had to catch out here. You was always at work. You never had time, so. When I did have time, you was at your mama's house. You doing something for your mama? You guys went out and got food together. He called you and you even lied to him when you were with him. Yeah, they got this on tape. No, I don't know what you're talking about. You want to see what he's talking about? Yeah, let me see, because I how really long, don't know what he's talking Tadisha, about. how long has this been going on? This is, this, is, this is a load of crap. I don't like this. Why are you doing this? Who is it? I don't know who that is. Really? You don't know who that is? No. It like, must be your twin. It looks like you, unless you have an identical twin. That ain't you right there. Oops. That's all you got to say is oops. Yep. That's all? Yep. You have nothing else to say. No remorse, no feelings, just blank I face. I don't have to do with y'all. Blank face. For real. Real talk. I'm going to see you, bro. Damien, what about you, man? I mean, was this worth a friendship with with, no. with Byron or no? Did you guys start to like each other? Well, I mean, what was the deal? Yeah. I mean, is any time to be honest, it's like your friends are already yeah. seeing everything yeah. you guys have done. You know? He's Not seen nobody you. else, one of my partners. He's seen you on your knees, he's seen you on your knees. He's also seen you on the hood of that car over there. That wasn't me on the car. That wasn't you on the car? Nope. Engaging in sexual intercourse? Made up. No. Yep. So this is Photoshop. This is this this isn't you. Damien. Is this her? Oh my God! Can y'all please stop this? See, you could have prevented all this by just being honest. Why do you keep doing that? Damn, it's not his fault. Or you? Do you have no remorse for human feelings? I mean, Damien, you no when you see how she's done your best friend like this, how did she know? You, how do you know that she's not gonna do you like that? Because I'm not. I'm asking not him, boring. not you. I mean, Damien, how could you, how, how could you not be worried that she's gonna, she's gonna do this to you too, as well? Forget your keys. Where are you going? I'm going out getting my keys. I have the keys. You got the keys. Yes. See something in there you need? Yeah, hey, yeah, I see something. Hey, man, what's up, bro? What are you doing? Yeah, ho ass. I bet you care. Stupid. I bet you care now, don't you, ho ass? Yeah. No, you get the back. I bet you care now, don't you? Dumbass. So is this worth it? Yeah, it was worth it. Tell Smash. his ass he needs to quit being boring. This doesn't look too boring. You just smashed up your windshield pretty good. Hey, watch out, watch out, watch out. Get him, grab him, grab him, grab him. Grab him. Damn. All right, let's, hey, let's, uh, hey. Are you all right? You okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. You ready? Let's load up. Despite being disgusted by the actions of the suspect, Byron heads down a road of indecision. Later, Cheaters updates you on his final resolution. But for now, Vanessa Upton returns to Cheaters to inform how she is faring since catching her boyfriend with another woman. I was upset when I saw him with another woman, specifically someone that I knew. And so when I saw them together, I just felt hurt and betrayed and just felt like my whole world was crushed because I thought we had a future and a life together. Here I am. I thought you were working. What the? Hey, I, I just, we just with went her? out. Just went out. We just went out. Sorry. Hey. I, with I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It ain't nothing like that. It ain't nothing like that. We just, we just went out. Just, just. just How many this? times? I have not spoken with him since. He's tried calling me a few times, but I haven't answered. I don't want to talk to him. I'm completely done. So maybe he's still with that girl. Maybe they're happy. I don't know. This wouldn't have happened if he would have just been truthful and honest with me. Now the public knows who he is. That is my man right there. It shouldn't have went like this. Not anymore. He's not with you anymore. Hey. He's with one now. He's really? You're going to go off with her? Yes, he's with Well, I mean, no. I told you. I told you. I mean, I just. Hey. Hey, let him go. You let, you let, this... let him go. Let him go. Don't I know. He's been a pussy. It's not worth it. No, it is. But yeah, what the? Chill. Come here. Chill. Come on, man. Come on. Chill. Come on. Chill. No. You want him? Chill. Wow, it's 
play. Even though it was hard going through my boyfriend cheating on me and having to end things that way, it all worked out in the end. I've moved on and I'm so much happier now. So all in all, I think it was a good thing that this happened. Completely dismayed at the suspect's actions and attitude, Byron Halpern has chosen to break things off with the suspect. As for the suspect's part in the affair, Ladesha Robertson denies having meant to hurt Byron's feelings in any way. Ladesha feels that Byron will come back around sooner or later. When questioned by Cheater's producers, Damian Franklin refused to comment on the case. From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. I, I, I don't know if I'm right now. We are pulling up right now. Open with me, girl. Reality Television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. For a musician who doubles as a roadie, long days away from his girlfriend served to make Jesse Xavier's heart grow fonder. Wanting only to make sweet music with her upon his return, Jesse, however, feels that his work schedule of late has been affecting his relationship. Concerned that time away creates opportunity as well as impetus for his woman to step out on him, Jesse hopes that our professionals can root out the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. At first when we got together, it was like everything she was excited about, me going out on the road, she loves music just as much as I do. And then here in the last year or so, it's uh, she's turned down coming out and hanging out with him on the road for two or three months at a time. Lauren Vega age 33, a bar manager accused of refilling another's glass with her love. Aware that Jesse is out of town on business, Cheater's detective set up a perimeter around the suspect's workplace. Hours into the stakeout, agents recognize the suspect as she leaves her place of employment. Tailing her through the neighborhood, agents follow her to a nearby cafe. She meets on the patio with an unknown female. The pair chatted up over iced coffees for about an hour or so. The situation appears rather innocent until the two women leave the restaurant. Operatives note that the women hold hands as they walk down the avenue. You know, I don't like being gone that much. I, I like to be home. And when I do get home, I've noticed that, uh, you know, things are different. Pictures are moved. Um, less pictures of us are around. You know, she was always excited to see me when I'd get home or excited to see me when I'd fly her out. Now it's kind of like, kind of like I'm I'm messing up her plans or I'm, I'm not, I'm just getting in the way kind of feel. It's just she's not as, uh, as exciting and she's not as bubbly as she used to be. I don't think she's on the uh, same page as I am. A little, uh, she's not her. The pair arrive at their destination, which is a retro clothing store. Investigators head inside, spotting Vega picking out blouses for her friend. The unknown female brazenly tries on the clothing right there at the rack. A short while later, the two, having not bought anything, leave the thrift store. The loving couple arrive back at Vega's place of employment. With a sweet kiss goodbye, Vega goes back to work and her new partner leaves. I'm ready to uh, not be on the road anymore. I'm ready to, you know, stay home. I'm gonna put more uh, time and effort. I hope she's not cheating on me, but Everything just kind of adds up that that's where it's going. And if she is cheating on me, I'd really like to know. That way I can, I can make my decision of what I'm gonna do. Investigation day five. A cheater surveillance team once again stakes out the suspect's place of business. Sometime during the day, Vega leaves her work site. Trailed by investigators, she walks down the street to a nearby bar. Greeted by her companion from previous surveillance, now identified only as Brit, Vega responds with a hug. 
the suspect and her date enter the establishment. By the time the surveillance team catches up to the duo, the women have saddled up at the bar enjoying a few drinks. Sometime after sundown, the suspect and her lover finish their drinks and leave the bar. They hop into Vega's car and drive off, followed closely by a mobile unit. A short drive later, the pair of women arrive at an unknown residence. They walk inside, and Vega stays for an extended amount of time. Hours later, the suspect emerges. Vega gets into her own vehicle and drives back to the home she shares with a forlorn Jesse. Investigation Day 8. Operatives on duty watch as the suspect, once again, exits work and heads downtown to meet with Britt. Inside the club, the women frolic and fondle each other in familiar fashion. Finally finishing their fun, Vega leads Britt outside to her vehicle. The pair is tailed across town to the suspect and Jesse's home. Interior surveillance cameras placed by our client capture the adulterous actions of his girlfriend. As cozy as Vega gets with Britt, it is Jesse who's left out in the cold, as depicted in this recorded phone call. Hey. Hey, Jesse. I got some good news. I'll be back tomorrow. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Hey, can you pick me up from the airport? Um, I don't know. I didn't expect you to come back so soon. What you got going on? Um, I picked up some extra work. All right, well, what time do you get off? Um, I'm not sure. I don't have details on it about what time it starts and finishes. So, like a private event, bartending work. All right, baby. I'll, I'll see you. Okay. I love you. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. With mounting misconduct amassed, the cheaters team heads for headquarters and prepares a dossier for Jesse's examination. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's misdeeds now documented, Cheaters recalls Jesse from his out-of-town gig to inform him of his girlfriend's illicit activities. Unsure of the outcome, yet desperately needing the truth, Jesse faces his fears. How are you doing tonight, Jesse? I don't know. I don't know. So, well, we conducted our investigation after you called us and came up with some findings. Are you prepared to see that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, let me see. Okay. Let me see. On this day of investigation, we are outside of Laura's workplace. Lauren leaves work. She arrives at a bar. This unknown female arrives. Our detectives catch up with them inside. They're playfully talking at this table. A while later, Lauren and Britt leave the bar together, and our detectives follow them in a vehicle. They then arrive at an unknown residence. They go inside, and for an undisclosed amount of hours, they are inside together. Later on that night, Lauren emerges, gets into her vehicle, and leaves. And during all this, you've been on the road, correct? Yeah. Okay. Continuing on with the rest of our investigation, you all right? Yeah. On this night of investigation, we are outside of Lauren's workplace. Lauren leaves work. She arrives at a bar and goes inside. That's when we see Lauren and Britt sitting at the bar together. They're exchanging kisses, having some drinks, and a while later, they leave. Our detectives then catch them walking to Lauren's vehicle. We follow them, and they arrive at Lauren's residence. Now, Jesse, do you recall when you first called me a couple months ago that I gave you that internal surveillance comment yeah, and yeah. I told you to put it in front of your couch? Well, this is that shot. That's when we have Lauren and Britt come inside. They sit down. Lauren takes Britt's clothes off. She then goes in for the kill and begins to perform something a little bit more extensive between yeah, her legs. I see it. Lauren then freshes up your residence before you returned home for the evening. I know exactly where they are. They are together. And we can get in the vans, get out of here, and go confront them. Yeah. Um, yeah? All detectives waiting outside yeah, and um, inside? All right, let's I, go. I don't know if I'm ready, man. Sure? Let's yeah? do this. All right, let's do it. Let's bust this bitch. Cool. Come on, this way.
Coming up, the conclusion. This week on Cheaters, Jesse Xavier finds out his girlfriend steps out on him, but not with another man. I just don't need, you know, the sneaking around. We are pulling up right now. Open with me, girl. I would have been all about it. Cheaters. Actually, we are pulling up right now. So if, if it's okay for you, why is it okay for me to you, sloppy second? Really how it's going to be? You're just your boy hanging after five years? He even said he's willing to an explanation. to. He, he said he's cool with you guys doing this. I try to communicate. I try to communicate. Being real with you, I try to communicate, but he doesn't listen Lauren and Britt, though, he saw the counter surveillance of what you two were doing on the couch, and he's totally cool with that. What? With an explanation. He's just coming to see why you wouldn't tell him if you're interested in the stuff that you're doing. He's okay with that. He's okay. Can me and you just talk? You brought up. Hey, Lauren, 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 come on. You could have called me. Can't you just, can we just talk about this? Dude, you're so afraid. Talk about it for one second. No, you're so afraid you can get 20 more people. Come on, baby. Come on. Get the lights out of my face and we'll talk. Get the lights out of my face and I'll talk. So, hey, Britt, even if it's cool with you being a lesbian, you don't think that's all right? You get the lights out of my face and I'll talk. Okay, so turn that way and talk to me. You can look at the wall and talk to me. The lights won't no, be in your face. No, look at the Like, on, just, can you please? We're all here to get an answer from you, and you're not giving us any of that. No, she doesn't need to give any of you answer. Just him. Can, hey. Yeah, so then just talk to him. I will, let, I will leave you guys alone. Talk. talk. Let them talk. You, you brought all this involved. You didn't listen when I tried to talk to you and told you I needed you home and that I had sexual Jason, needs and you weren't listening to me. You would rather go play your guitar than. Come listen to me. So you want to talk? You can call me. Get the lights out of my face. I love cheaters. Really? Really? You guys are really gonna follow me like this? You can't Seriously? Tell the truth. You could have just been open with me, girl. I would have. I would have been all about it. Watch that wire. Go around. Damn it, Tracy has my keys. Come here, girl. I got keys. You can't just, you guys can't just give him any explanation. Come on, Britt. I'm not trying to bother you. Honestly, we will leave you alone. Treat her right. just, just, one just talk to me for just a second. Lord, hey, man, one can you get the camera out of her face? She'll talk to me. Yeah. If I get the camera out of her face. Hey, hey. Brandy. Come on, Lauren, come home with me. Brandy, Brandy. Get this bitch off me and come home with me, baby. Okay. Come on. Brandy. Don't let her. Get don't, don't, don't let her. Don't let her change your mind, baby. Come on. Come on. Talk to him. Come on. Talk to Please come home with me. Talk to him. Hey, hey, I will, I will, I will get everybody out of your face if you just come home with me. Come on. Come on. I don't got time to talk. I have to go back to work. You know what? If you don't come with me now, this is how it ends. This is how it ends right now. So you want to If you don't right come now? with me now, yeah, this is how right it ends. Now. Five years of man that loves you and is willing to accept that you guys a like to. A man that loved me for five years would not have cameras in my face right now. He would talk to me like a grown He's man. tried to, but he's been so in his head about it, he wasn't even sure. So he called us. And now I'm we have. I'm expressing to you, baby. Come on. No. He loves come and supports me. anything you do. Oh, he was a. If he was forward about it. Or her by look, himself look, anyway. Because what if get you didn't know it was me. true? Get her, get her away from me. Get her, get her away from me. Get her, get her away from me. What's the deal? I, 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 I want to hear what the deal is. I want to hear what the deal is. I got a grand gesture. What's the deal? What's the deal? You come with me right now. Just come home with me right now. I'm not coming home. I'll drop out. I'll stop playing. If you were open, I would have accepted it. But you out partying with your friends. Don't invite her. Don't try to fuck her. I don't want to talk to her. Lord knows what you're doing. You get up at 6 in the morning and she's calling me. Here's the deal. I want to talk to her. Here's the deal. I want to talk to you. She's part of my life. I want to talk to you. You said you put the cameras out here. I'm putting you out there, man. Seriously. Where are the keys going? This is so friend. He's She's a part of my life. She's going to be a part of my life. You guys accept that? Maybe we can talk, but not right here. Period. Long story he, short, then, you are willing, you were willing to talk to this man again regarding this whole situation? You know, just, I don't even know where I'm lost my keys. Damn it. Maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe you should actually stop for a second and just know that this guy me. cares about come you and just supports just anything that you want to do. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Just come with me. You don't need keys. I'm done. Right with me. I'm done. He's a coward. 
What do you want to do, man? Man, I'm done. I'm done. Do you guys get go home. home. The rest of them are gone. He's gone. I'm not talking to him. I'm done. Come on. She's mine. You guys give it up. Come on. Let's go home. You gotta go home. Jesse, what do you want to do now? I'm gonna need a drink. You want something to drink? The kick ass pizza place right here. I'm buying. At odds with his feelings, Jesse must come to terms with the fact that his girlfriend may not love him anymore. Later, we'll update you on how he proceeds. But first, Jeters presents Nora Jessup, a former suspect who wants the world to know her side of things. Concerning the time she got caught straying in her marriage, Nora comes to Cheaters to clear things up. It was very much of a shock when I saw Jimmy and all the camera crew. Um, I never experienced anything like that before, and I don't think I want to again either. Getting caught was one thing, but it was difficult seeing him in such an angry state. I have never seen him like that before. It really kind of touched my heart, and I felt bad. Out, dan out dancing? What the f Who the hell are you, dude? What are you doing I'm a husband. Here? I'm a f***ing man. Who the f***ing in the ring? Oh what are you doing out here, Nora? Seriously, I'm out of here. Dude, you do not. Hey, dude. I'm Dude, I'm not here. Are you I'm not here. Hey, what what are you doing? I'm following you. All these damn cameras. What are you doing? Oh, my God. What are you f***ing about? 20 like years. That. Well, after I left, I drove around for quite a while just thinking about things, and I finally went home, and Jimmy wasn't home. He didn't come home for several days, which kind of scared me. I called him, I texted him, called the hospital, and he was just nowhere to be found. He, he disappeared really well. And um, when he finally came home, he gave me the ultimatum, if our marriage is to work, that we need to go to counseling. And so I told him we would. Do you love me I'm or not? I'm so tired of you. I want a kid. You just can't. You think we didn't fight? I wanted children. <laughs> so you guys were actually, so you were pursuing each other? I thought she was cool as I don't do this kind of man. Huh? Okay. Not on purpose. You know, I worked hard for us. You and you too, worked right? hard for us, too. You worked hard the entire time I was going she to school. Wait, I had these cameras all over the place. Oh, my on, God. You know, the counseling sessions are going good. Jimmy and I are getting along well. He wants to make it work. I want to make it work. We're going out like we used to. We're spending more time together. But I guess I still feel a little trapped, a little resentful about the whole situation. You know, you can't take back all the years that we had. You can't take back not having children when it's too late for that. It's I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I mean, I do love him. I still love him. I know he still loves me. Dealing with the chaos of the confrontation, Jesse Xavier confesses he's never been in quite the same trouble. He says, I've been dumped before, but never for a woman. I still can't believe she did all this. She could have been straight with me. What man wouldn't want a girl who swings both ways? I'd have been all about that. On her side of things, Lauren Vega admits she should have been honest about her relationship with her girlfriend. She informs Cheaters producers that she's happy with her newfound relationship. Vega claims, Brit will do anything for me, including standing up to an angry boyfriend. The suspect's companion, Brit, angrily refuted any questions posed to her by Cheaters. 